My name is Steve Marusi. I'm here to talk about the user interface uh, for the Neotherm boilers. And this was prior production to October 2012. So earlier production has this display. Anything manufactured after October 2012 is utilizing a different display. So what we're going to talk about here is you have four buttons. You have an up and down arrow, two buttons on the bottom. <clears throat> there are three modes of operation. There's user mode, there's setup mode, and there's diagnostic mode. Uh, very first thing you want to do when setting up this boiler is set your central heat set point. Central heat set point is your desired set point for your heating system. All right, and then we'll get into setting up domestic hot water if you're utilizing it with an indirect. So looking at the outlet screen, very simply press the up button. The up button... All of the boilers come defaulted for 120 degrees. We don't know what temperature or what type of system you're using. You could be using in-floor radiant, you could be using hydro air, or you could be using uh, baseboard heat. So they're all defaulted for 120 degrees. And what we're going to use here is the example of 180 degree for baseboard heat. So we're going to press our up arrow, and we're going to bring that temperature to 180. Once we've achieved 180, on the lower part of the screen, on the left-hand lower part of the screen, it says done. You have to remember to press this button and release it. If you don't, it's going to go back to the defaulted setting of 120 degrees. Okay? So that's how we now store our set point in our control. All right? Next, we're going to go in and set up our domestic hot water. So what we're going to do here, that is in the user mode. So the user mode is just scroll through the next button or press the next button to scroll through that menu. So we're starting at the outlet screen. I press next. It's going to show inlet. I press next again. It's going to show me my delta T. And again, this boiler is not running. It's just sitting idle. So we only have a one degree delta T. Press next again. It will show DHW. In this screen, this is where we're going to use our up arrow and increase our temperature to our desired set point. Okay? Keep in mind, you should have mixing valves on your system so you don't get into scalding issues. Okay? Once you set your domestic set point, simply press the next, the done button rather. Press and hold the done button so it stores the temperature. Okay? Now, three modes of operation. Again, I said user mode, setup mode, diagnostic mode. So in the user mode, which was just simply scroll through the next button, it shows you the outlet temperature, press next, it'll show you inlet, next again is delta T, next again is domestic hot water, which we just went through and set up, next again is our stack temperature. If the boiler was running, it'll show you the stack temperature. Next again is the outdoor temperature, so when you're utilizing outdoor reset, you must use the outdoor sensor, so it's registering 72 today. And also, next again, would show you the rate of fire. So if this boiler was running, is it running at 20% or is it running at 100% of fire? So I am going to scroll back down, back over to the outlet setting, okay, or the outlet screen. The next screen I want to talk about is the setup mode or setup screen. The setup screen is achieved by pressing and holding the up and down arrows simultaneously. In the manual, it may tell you to hold them for three seconds or five seconds. I don't let them go. I'll just press and hold both buttons at the same time until the Fahrenheit symbol appears on the screen. Now I know I'm locked into that setup screen. Okay? From here, you're going to use your next button. Press next. And this is the screen that you would use to set up your outdoor reset. Okay? So right here, it's in the off position. And it's registering LBT, HOD, LOD. If you turn it on, okay, by using the up arrow, now my next three parameters that will appear on the screen will be my low boiler temperature, high outdoor, low outdoor, and we'll explain that in a second. So we've now turned on the outdoor reset feature. I press next, and it's asking me for my low boiler temperature. Low boiler temperature is the temperature we want to achieve during a high outdoor air temp. Example of that, let's say it was uh, 60 degrees. At 60 degrees, we don't need 180 degree water running through that baseboard. Maybe we can get our way with 130 or 135. So in this screen, use your up or down arrow to achieve or choose the temperature you want. You don't have to hit the done button. Press next. It's going to give us the HOD, which stands for high outdoor, which I've got it set for 60. So at 60 degrees of outdoor air temperature, 
we're now only going to achieve 135 degree temperatures. Next again is the low outdoor. Okay, low outdoor is what temperature do we now want to run at 180? So right now it's set up for 10 degrees. You can actually increase that or decrease that. So if you want to run it up to 18 degrees of outdoor air temperature, now we'll achieve 180. Or if you want to bring it all the way down to zero, you may. So you can customize your system, all right? I'm going to bring it back to 10 degrees. So at 10 degrees of outdoor air, we will now achieve 180 degree baseboard temperatures. Press next again. This is remote address. A single standalone boiler should always have a remote address of one. If you're cascading boilers, and what that means is we can take up to eight boilers, daisy chain them together, uh, and now we can operate them off one boiler, which becomes the master. The others become the, la the lag boilers. Okay. So on a single standalone boiler, <coughs> you should always have an address of one. If you're cascading and you've got two boilers, your second boiler you would use your up arrow and choose two, all right? But on the first boiler or the master boiler is always one. Press next again, lead lag, okay? So now what we're doing is we're lead lagging these boilers if you've got multiple boilers together. If you don't and it's a single boiler, press next and it should be left for off, okay? However, if you're cascading boilers, you want to choose, is this boiler the, the lead or the master boiler? or is it the slave or the lag boilers? You can use your up or down arrow. I would choose leader for the lead boiler, okay? Remote address of one. My lag boilers or the slave boilers, I'd use my up or down arrows until I see SLA, which stands for slave, okay? So boiler two would have an address of two, a remote address of two, and that would be set up as slave. The lead boiler is always address of one, and that would be set up as the leader. For this example, I'm just going to go back to off, and we're going to pretend it's a standalone boiler. Press next again is HS. All HS is, that's an engineering term for hysteresis. All that means is differential. Okay? So press next again. We have a five-degree differential. That's it. So our target point was 180. So that boiler will now run up to 185 degrees on the coldest day of the year, okay? and it'll kick back on five degrees less of 180. So at 175 degrees, it would come back on. Base load, BL, okay? What that is, if we're cascading, <clears throat> we want to modulate these boilers. So the lead boiler would modulate up to, example, 50%. If it can't meet demand for the heating load, it's going to bring on boiler two and bring that boiler up to 50%, okay? You can do up to eight boilers at once, and then they'll ramp to 100% together, okay? So base load, press next again is defaulted for 50%. That is customizable, so you can drop that all the way down to 20% or bring it up to 80%. So boiler one can only modulate to 20%. Can't meet below it, it's going to bring on boiler two, they'll modulate up together, all right? Your true efficiencies are at your lower percentage of fire. You really don't want to take a cascaded system and run each boiler to 100%, okay? You're going to lose efficiencies at that higher level. So you always bring them to a lower percentage of fire, all right? Next again, SD, all right, this is warm weather shutdown. It's defaulted for 100 degrees. So what happens here, if I'm using outdoor reset, which I highly recommend, <clears throat> I would bring this down about two or three degrees above my high outdoor setting, all right, or at 70 degrees. And what that means is if anybody goes and turns a thermostat on at 70 degrees, this boiler won't fire. Anything below 70 degrees, it'll fire and keep our low boiler temperature, all right? So from 65 to 70 degrees, if you've got a call for heat, you'll, you'll achieve your low boiler temperature, all right? Next again is ASC. It's any short cycle, all right? All that means is if you've got a call for heat, someone turns off the thermostat and immediately turns it back on, it's going to wait one minute before it attempts to fire the boilers. This is adjustable up to 15 minutes. Okay, comes defaulted for one minute. If you wanted to adjust it, just use your up or down arrows. Okay, I'm going to bring it back to one minute. Now that we're, we've reached this screen, you can now press done. All right, when you press done, any changes you made in the setup mode will now be saved or stored. Press done, they're all stored. Now, when you get into cascading, um, you need to use a system sensor. So if we've got eight boilers or two boilers, 
We provide you with a system sensor and an outdoor sensor with every boiler. The system sensor would go out in the heating loop, okay? And now we want to set that up in the lead lag feature, all right? Because you're cascading these boilers, and that's the set point we want to achieve. So that is in the user screen. Again, the user mode is simply press the next button and scroll, scroll down. So starting in the inlet, outlet temperature, press next is inlet. Press next again is delta T. Next again is DHW. Next again is our stack. There's our outdoor. There's the rate of fire. And here's lead lag, LL, lead lag. Okay. In this screen, now this is where you're going to achieve your temperature. I'm sorry, I have to press it one more time. And because I don't have the sensor hooked up on this, it's not allowing me. But this is where I would go in and set my uh, lead lag set point. Okay. So... Lastly, the, what I want to talk about is diagnostic mode. Diagnostic mode, you can get in and look at your alert and lockout codes. However, if someone powers the boiler off on this version of the display, it won't store it. The newer displays we're using uh, will store up to 15 um, lockouts. So in diagnostic and also in diagnostic, this is where you're going to set up your combustion. So for every section, we provide you with the first section of CPVC for your boiler. It's got a tapping with a plug. Take that out. You put your combustion analyzer in. Now you're going to lock your boiler into 100% of rate, which is high fire. Adjust your CO2. Then you're going to bring it down to, to low fire percentage. How to get into that is using the next button. Simply press and hold the next button. Again, I don't let it go. All right. Very first thing that's going to appear would be microamp. If this boiler was running, or your or microamp signal. If this boiler was running, it would give me a microamp reading. Press next again. It's going to read alerts. We don't have any alerts right now. If you did, you could clear them. Press next again. It would show lockouts, and that's appearing on the screen as zero. Next again is the outlet temperature. That's fixed at 200 degrees. You can't adjust that. That is our limit, okay? So that boiler will never achieve over 200 degrees. Next again is DHW. Next again is our stack, max stack temperature. So what that is, is inside the boiler outlet of the heat exchanger, it will not allow our stack temperature to go any higher than 195, okay? Press next again. It reads min. Press it one more time, and it's going to flash between the outlet temperature of the boiler and 10%. 10% is the modulation point. This boiler is now going to modulate down to 10%, which is low fire. We always set high fire first. So we press next again, reads max, next one more time, and now we're going to flash between 100% of fire and our, out, our outlet temperature. That 100% of fire, the fan's going to ramp up, locking us into high fire. We have our analyzer in. We make our gas valve adjustments. And right from this screen, you can now use your down arrow and bring that down to 10% modulates the boiler down, and from there, we can now dial in our low-fire CO2 adjustment. Okay, So I'm going to bring this down to 10% of fire. I don't have to hit done. I just have to bring it down to 10%. Now we're in low-fire. The boiler is going to modulate. We finish our CO2 readings. Again, it's going to flash between the outlet temperature and your percentage of fire. When you're in this setup mode, you're you only have five minutes to make your adjustments, okay? Uh, so this will time out after five minutes. If you're taking your time on making those adjustments, you may have to get back into the screen again, uh, into the uh, diagnostic screen, scroll all the way down to the bottom till you see 100% appear, and then bring it down to your 10% or 100%. When you're done, you want to put this boiler in normal operation, just hit the done button. That'll take us out of override, or you can let it time out, okay? I'm going to press the Done button. It immediately brings me right back to the outlet screen. For anybody interested in uh, training classes on the Neotherm, which we get into, we do have a live-fired station here at the facility. We can hold up to 70 people in our training room. Uh, please go to Lars.com and look at our online sign-up sheets for our training classes. Thank you very much.